If we could just uh, winding up this session, I want to thank the delegates for the contribution that they have made in terms of their suggestions uh, and opinions and in highlighting the issues uh, at local level. And to AJ, who well represents his organisation, he's one of the many national organisations that represent small businesses that are to the fore in terms of defending small businesses and that are asking for policy change. Dara has outlined to you what his vision for enterprise is in this country and he has centred small business as being the engine of growth within our economy. But let's look back from 2011. If the SMEs are the engine of growth within our economy, what has happened to them? We have gathered here today at this Ardesh to discuss small business. We have seen many television programmes and other forums where small business is discussed, where individuals have been involved in business, and that includes farmers, come forward and complain bitterly about the lack of policy, the lack of direction, and the lack of understanding of the position that they are now in, in terms of negative equity, poor banking, lots of regulation, but yet, all of their contributions have fallen on deaf ears. There has been no action. Activity is not action. And that is what we have seen from this government. And if you look back to 2011 and consider all of the promises that were made, if you consider all of what was said during that election campaign, these two parties in government have actually abandoned what they told the Irish people. They set out their stall and they failed miserably to deliver on that. And the ones to suffer are the ones that are in business, the ones that are giving potential or jobs and creating potential jobs within their e economy, within their community. These are the people that are suffering and they get no response from this government. What we're looking at in small business is not just a name over a door. It is a family. It is blood, sweat and tears. It is perhaps handed down through generations. It is the only potential within a local community where jobs can be created. Yes, we can have the discussion about Enterprise Ireland and the IDA, but central to the recovery of this country and going back up to 800,000 jobs is the indigenous sector, the small business, the family who commits itself within its own local community and that's where the growth will come from. The figure of 800,000 has been given as a figure of those that are employed in the SME sector. That figure has dropped closer to 600,000 and it continues to be threatened by the lack of an understanding from government into the problems that face that whole community of business people. Now I ask you to look at the discussion that was had about the banks during all of this time. Look at the amount of taxpayers' money that has been put into those banks. With a clear directive from the late Brian Lennon when he was there to lend to small businesses, to begin to solve the problems that they have, and to encourage them to have an enterprising spirit in these difficult times, backed by taxpayers' money, because that money came from taxpayers and it was put through the banks. And yet there is a massive complaint across the country that banks are not lending. Not only are they not lending to small businesses, but they are belittling those businesses by ensuring that they can't work themselves out of the negative position that, are, that they are in. If you look at the rates situation, we were told that there would be reform of commercial rates. We have had nothing only an increase of commercial rates. And over the coming months with the restructure of local government, you are going to find, like the ones that have been revalued already, that there will be an increase in those rates. That is the direction that that particular uh, local authority charge or tax is going in. Now, we put forward a bill that would have adjusted the legislation, that would have provided for an ability to pay that that consideration will be given in the context of the creation of businesses, the furtherance of enterprise, and yet that was voted down by those in government. They promised that before the election and they delivered nothing after the election. I have heard lots of debate 
about upward only rent reviews. We were told that that would be stopped when the government was elected. It not only continues, but the one that has the greatest upward only rent review portfolio is actually the government itself. And they have put people who have leased businesses or premises from them, they've put them out of business. They are attacking rural Ireland every single day. You look at the protests from the post office network. They turned up at the gates of Leinster House. They are a central piece in rural Ireland, in their communities. And yet they are now threatened, not by some other competition, but by the government itself. And the government is doing nothing to ensure that they are given a lifeline and an indication that they will get support from central government to continue the task that they do and the business that they do, keeping a local community together and indeed dealing with the many issues that confront them. So we have seen post offices closed down. We have seen pubs closed down. We have seen convenience stores around the place closed down. People talk about the, we've bottomed out and there's growth. I ask you to drive through any village up or down this country and you will see auctioneer signs and boarded up windows in almost every town and village and no understanding from the government that this is devastating not just local communities but people, families and it's destroying employment and driving people to go beyond our shores to seek employment in a different land where perhaps there's a greater understanding for people and a greater place for people within the policy making um, arrangements within those countries. At a time when we're losing jobs, at a time when enterprise is being tested left, right and centre, what do the government do? They close down the county enterprise boards. They put them into local authorities. With due respect to local authorities, I don't believe there is a commercial note in their head in relation to the creation of jobs. They have completely ignored those that advise them in relation to the creation of jobs. And they will not succeed as the county enterprise board did. And when you have a plan and you're sticking to it, why walk away from it when it's proving to be successful and cost effective? It is simply outrageous that they would not address these issues. If you turn to regulation and red tape, and everybody talks about it. Everybody in small business talks about it. Nothing has been done. There is spin and spin and spin, but there is no action in this area, none whatsoever. You look at the coal merchants and the regulations that have been put on them. Look at the transport operators and the regulations that have been put on them. Look at hoteliers and shops. How many inspections do they get from the different government departments? If you're a farmer, how many inspections do you get from the Department of Agriculture? I'm not saying that none of them are necessary, but I can tell you one thing, eight in a day are eight people that you're answering to, as well as trying to work your farm or work your business, is simply too much for the small businesses in this country. And the reduction of red tape, the reduction of red tape starts with reducing the impact of big government on small business. Tourism was mentioned, and we're in the home of it here. And tourism is part of the drive. I come from Kilkenny City, where the tourism numbers make a difference to our economy. And we talk about the beautiful landscape and what people come to see. And you know what they're doing with it? Let's put up a lot of pylons, let's throw in a few turbines, and let's ruin the landscape. And there is an issue for us here, and we do need uh, security in terms of our energy. But do we need to destroy what is saving this country in terms of jobs and employment? Do we have to push democracy out the door with no consultation whatsoever in relation to all of these developments? Because nobody is being asked. It's all a complete setup in terms of consulting local communities. 
and we need to speak about it. And you need to speak to the candidates that visit you about this. There is an elite group in this country that is now running cabinet, four of them, none of them entrepreneurs, none of them understanding what it's like to lie awake at night and worry about the bank and your employees the next day. None of them have gone through board meetings where you conduct your board meeting with your wife or your partner at late at night when everyone has gone home, when you're worrying there yourself in relation to what's going to happen the next day. No understanding of that. And even the company's bill as it goes through the doll, and Darrell's doing a fine job in terms of representing the party and putting forward the various amendments that are necessary. None of them reflect on what we are doing. None of them reflect on the agony that is going on in small businesses in this country. And can I just mention procurement? Procurement was supposed to be the big thing for small businesses. Everybody was to benefit. And you ask anyone in the print industry or the stationery industry, and they will tell you that they're closing down their operations because they simply cannot compete with the procurement management that the state has now involved itself in. It is a complete nonsense that they're saving money. And yet, they continue to pursue it in a way that I find objectionable and without value for money. And yet, they won't revisit it. I just want to look at the other side of the balance sheet by way of conclusion. I sit on the Public Accounts Committee every Thursday. And I can tell you that your taxes are being wasted every single week. The amount of inefficiency in the state, the amount of poor governance does not serve us well. What does this have to do with small business or individuals? It's your taxes they're wasting. It's your taxes that is going down the drain. You look at the Department of Justice. They knocked a building that they began to construct. Four million euro gone down the drain. Nobody took responsibility for it. If you look at Pool Bay, 108 million euro, and yet the Public Accounts Committee cannot examine the books of that organisation and stop it. Stop it, because it's going nowhere. Irish water is the biggest quango created by this government. They said that they would... They said that they would eliminate the quangos. I can tell you, I've lost count of them. I don't know where they're coming from. And there's new ones appointed every day. But Irish water tops the lot. And the man in charge of Irish water was at one time in charge of Pool Bay. In fact, the man that was in charge of banking in this country when it all went wrong was promoted. And he's now in Europe. So if you want to get on, do something wrong. There'll be a place found for you. <laughs> and lastly, I want to use this opportunity to say to you that the public want a change. They want reform. They don't want nonsensical statements from Enda, phone me. I know people that phoned him. I've spoken to them. And they got nothing only bleep, 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 but they got no action. They got no, no soft shoulder to cry on or to explain their case. In fact, Morris McCabe contacted him, Sergeant Morris McCabe, but Enda did nothing. And I want to compliment that man for what he did. I want to compliment John Wilson for what he did. And I want to wish John Wilson a speedy recovery. And I want to say to all of those that have, not as whistleblowers, but as concerned citizens that have stepped forward to try and save the state some money, I want this state to protect them. I want this state to stand by them. And I want this state to ensure that their promotional prospects are not hindered in any way, shape or form. These people are concerned citizens and they should be respected for what they have done. And those that have done wrong 
and have proven to have done wrong should be penalised in some way. We need to take a grip. I want to agree with Leo Radiker and what he has said. Because the one thing about Fianna Fáil and its leaders, you can mention Brian Lenehan, Brian Cowan in his day, you can say what you like about them, but they were Republicans. They believed in democracy. This government does not believe in democracy. It does not protect the citizen. In fact, the first obligation of the government they have failed in, which is to keep our people safe. And they have not done so. And they continue in the vein that they are in, which is protecting the culture that exists in this country. The institution is always right. Well, I say that there are times when the people are right, when the individuals are right, and when that is the case, let's protect them. Let's ensure that as we go through this local elections, as our 400 odd candidates are out there canvassing, that they understand if they are elected, it has to be for the people and by the people. They cannot forget the fact that it's citizens and people that they represent, that this is a republic that all of us are proud of, a republic that we will stand by clearly. And I'll ask you to support our candidates and to encourage them to have that ethos and that belief so that Fianna Fáil can once again be great. Thank you.